In just over two weeks, Torontonians will cast their ballots for the candidate they feel best reflects their interests at Nathan Phillips Square. Joining us now, the three who think they are best able to lead Ontario's capital city. In alphabetical order, they are Olivia Chow, Doug Ford, and John Tory. And it's good to welcome you three to our makeshift studios here in Leaside. Nice to have you with us again. Thanks for having us. We want to remind our viewers you can be part of this conversation tonight. We have producers standing by for a Twitter chat right now, so chime in and use the hashtag AgendaTVO. You've all done this so many times, we're really struggling to try to make sure we ask you at least a couple of questions you haven't heard before. So, I'm not pretending this first one will be, but hopefully through the course of this, there will be. Let's start nice and just sort of neutral and open-ended here again, alphabetical order. Olivia Chow, how would you characterize the last four years at City Hall? Well, last four years has been a lot of battles and a lot of missed opportunities. And as a result, we've seen TDC fares gone up, uh, parks and recs fees have gone up, and different fees have gone up, but the service has declined. And more young people are, uh, ha have higher unemployment rate, and even more children are living in poverty. So we can do so much better with a new mayor. Doug Ford, last four years. Well, we've turned a bankrupt city into a prosperous city, number one in the world uh, on, the, on the tax rate. Uh, we're number one in the world to work, number two in the world to live, and we've balanced the, the books for the first time, and we actually have a, a surplus of $248 million. Uh, we've broken every single record in a positive fashion in the city. Our city is thriving. We're going to continue to thrive under my leadership for the next four years. John Tory. I'd say uh, divisive and disappointing, Steve. I think that uh, the division that's uh, you know been so prevalent that people have seen uh, has has resulted in so many things we could have done better. We could have got more done on jobs and on transit, and you know all the things that are talked about. Uh, you know, sure, you can talk about how much you went forward, but you could have gone so much further forward in terms of building a city from you know from really good to really great. Let's try this because this is a bit of a job interview, right? That in some cases lasts 10 months, 8 months, a few weeks, depending on how long you've been in the campaign. If people pick you, Olivia Chow, to be the mayor, what's the greatest strength you offer that they'll be getting? That I know how to get things done, that I share their values, and I would work with them for each other and uh, with each other and uh, they know that they can count on me and I say what I mean and I do what I say and action speaks much louder than words. What's the biggest asset you bring to the job, Doug Ford? Well, on resume, um, my resume is transparent. Unlike John Tory's, he left eight years of charter communications out of his resume. Uh, one of the largest bankruptcies in, in U.S. history. He sat on the board he was taking uh, a check right up to the, the weeks before they went bankrupt. You have to be transparent. Everyone knows my resume. And it's a proven track record. Unlike Mr. Tories, he doesn't have a track record. And I keep asking him, name one thing you've done to save taxpayers money. He refuses to answer. Okay, but I'm asking about your biggest asset that you bring to the my, job. My, my biggest asset, Steve, I have a proven track record. My resume is transparent. They know what I've done. We've turned the city around. I've sat four years on, on budget. I understand the numbers. I can hit the ground running and make sure we continue with prosperity in the city. Okay, before you answer the question, I don't know if you want to address the comment he made earlier about your affiliation with a certain company. I was uh, brought into a very difficult situation in a company to help uh, clean up a, a very difficult situation. And I think the founder of that company, the co-founder of Microsoft, has uh, said uh, what needs to be said in terms of how respected I was and how hard I tried to uh, make a difficult situation better. But you know, and quite a track record it is in Mr. Ford's case indeed. There's quite a track record. But I would say in answer to your question, my greatest uh, you know, strength is ability to work with others and do it 18 hours a day and get things done. And I think that's what people are looking for at the City Hall. They want an end to the divisiveness. Uh, they want to see people working together. Everybody, councillors first, but other governments, uh, business, labour, uh, the communities at large. And they want to see us getting things done and get results. And uh, I'm fortunately able through energy to put in a long day, which I just think helps you to do more of the same in terms of getting things done and working with others. I've heard two candidates here say they think getting along with others and being able mm -hmm. to work well with others is an important asset to bring to the job. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, do you think it is, Mr. Ford? Well, I, I think it is, and we have a proven track record of doing getting things done. Uh, they want to paint that picture. It's not an accurate picture. Uh, we ended up getting 98% of our agenda through. You don't get that by fighting with people. We ended up getting a Scarborough subway up the last year, working with the province, working with the complete council, and working with the federal government. We ended up getting the land, uh, the, the car registration tax uh, through. We ended up getting labor peace for, for four years. We ended up getting uh, all the budgets through, overwhelmingly. Uh, we were saving about, money. I do have to ask about the 98% figure. How do you come to that, that you got 98% well, percent Where we weren't able to get uh, one of our uh, pieces of our agenda through is the land transfer tax. It's not. It's not that we didn't. We, we didn't have the money. We had 30 million extra dollars, but you need the will of council. And sometimes the will of council would rather uh, line line the pockets of special interest groups. We stand up for the taxpayers. Well, see, I think the difference is experience. <clears throat> I've done it, and things that that we can be proud of. Like when someone that can't talk to the 911 operator uh, because he or she might not speak English, I've been able to work with others to get it to speak 140 languages, right? Uh, Low-income seniors and children getting good free dental program or good food in schools, all of those things are my track record and my experience. Those are things that make us proud as a city of Toronto. Whereas Mr. Ford talked about things that I don't think everybody believe is something that can make us proud, like TDC fares going up, for example. Mr. Tory have not been able to give any concrete results when he was uh, in Queen's Park as the conservative leader uh, for a few years. And so I have concrete results that have delivered to people and people know my track record, know my experience, and I have no learning curve and can get things done. The only reason I asked the follow-up about the 98% figure was, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is, a newspaper has published a list of the promises made by, obviously not you, but your brother when mm -hmm. he was uh, running four, four years ago. Reduce the size of council to 23 members, not done. Reduce mm -hmm. councillor staffing budgets to 175 grand, not done. Open all major purchases to competitive bids, not done. Set sunshine date Actually, for in-camera that, meetings. That's just not correct. i, I got to stop you because you okay. keep, you're being disingenuous. Well, I'm, ju I'm just reading the list. And I, I don't know who came up with that. We actually reduce the councillor's uh, personal slush fund from 53000 down to 30000 um, on the reducing the size of councillor. Council. Absolutely. The vast majority of the people believe we should have a smaller councillor, your council. But when you're, you're going to vote uh, and you ask someone to vote against their own job, it's difficult. It takes the province to do that, and that's, that's important. Uh, there are people in this city who believe that um, the Fords do what they say they're going to do. Do you think that's not the case? Well, I mean, you just read a list of things that were not done that they said they would do. Well, you can say, well, it was the province's well, fault, but it was Mr. Rob Ford that I, made the promise. So, he, you know, if he said, I'm going to do it, he didn't put an asterisk beside it saying, if I can convince the province. And so, but look, I, I think the real issue here is, is you know, we, we saw it, it's about the divisiveness again. And, and even here in the first five minutes of our chat, you saw that when asked a question about his own strength, Mr. Ford uh, chose uh, to attack me and my resume. And that's very disappointing because, you know, I just think people are going to be very disappointed to see that kind of performance by you, Doug, because they will say at the end of the day, look, we need a leader here who's going to bring the city and the council together, not somebody who is going to be engaged in kind of some combination of an armed combat well, and a circus. Well, well, let me tell you something. You've got to be transparent when you apply for a job. John, you wouldn't hire anyone if they left eight years of the resume out, which you did. You want to hide it, and it, the, he, Mr. Tory's had a free pass. Doug, you he's could had a free Google. pass you for could. six months. He knows it. He refuses to ask questions. The engineering firm. What do you mean a free pass? A free pass from the media. Um, he refuses to ask, answer the questions about his so-called fast track plan. Uh, he doesn't have Smart an engineering. Track, I think it's called. Smart track. I don't even know what his plan is. Backtrack, as far as I'm concerned. Um, he doesn't have an engineering firm. He pulls out some editorial from the paper. That's that's written, the qualification. But written, but Steve, by the leading uh, yeah. transit may expert. I, uh, may I suggest okay. something? Okay. Stand by one. Olivia Chow. Olivia Chow, please, with the floor. Yeah. yeah. May I suggest that 
all of this is about personality and divisiveness or whatever, CVs, but let's look at the vision. Look at the actual policies, because this election is not just about sloganeering, whether it's smart track or subways or whatever slogan it is. It's about the vision of our city. And it's about actually investing now so we could actually do something with each other, for each other. Their policies are quite similar. Neither of them talk about our poli the importance of supporting families. You know municipal government have a mandate to provide better quality of child care. Neither of them have actual concrete proposal on how many child care spaces they can provide. Neither of them would provide and say how many jobs they can support for young people. And supporting young people is so important because we just saw three shootings, three deaths, one of them 15 year old. That should shock us and say there is something not quite right. And we need to end child poverty. We need to build more affordable affordable housing, we need to invest in the city. Neither of them have a concrete John, I mean, policy Steve, that's about just categorically it. untrue. I mean, I have, Olivia doesn't happen to agree with the approach I would take, for example, to youth employment, which really focuses more on partnerships with the private sector as opposed to her kind of government mandated, government invented short term jobs. And I agree, sometimes those short term jobs are a bit of a helping hand to people, but I'm much more focused in my program, which is laid out in my platform, on saying we've got to partner with unions and with private sector companies to create real jobs that turn into careers for young people. And she doesn't like that, you know, which is fine, we can disagree, no, but the notion not. she'd say I, doesn't, I don't have a program is preposterous. Well, that's not true, well. because I, you called my jobs plan, asking the company that do business with the city to sign a community benefits uh, agreement, some kind of bureaucracy making. The, the premier of this province, Kathleen Wynne, just last weekend said, yeah, this is the way to go, because she, through Metrolink, have also uh, asked to sign a community benefits agreement, which means the companies that are going to be working with uh, Metrolink will need to hire young people. It's a proven way to hire young people, and it works. It works in Regent Park, okay, created he's, 600 he's, jobs. Is it fair to say he's got a different approach? It's not your approach, but he has an approach? But his approach basically is asking business to partner with them. You can do that without being a mayor. You can do it while you are ahead of the civic action. No, because, because this Steve, where, where she's wrong. What, because what, the mayor it, actually has an ability, because of the privilege and the office you're given, to get a lot more businesses involved in helping young people out. And that's something that I intend to do. I did it as a private citizen, and I will do, be able to do even more as the mayor because you're the mayor. Okay, so let me pick up on this idea. It will create hundreds me, and hundreds of opportunities for kids. Let me pick up on this Good notion of, of being able to convince others to come your way, which is part of leadership, and you've all expressed uh, your own self confidence at being able to do that kind of thing. Can you give us an example, Mr. Forbes, we'll start with you first. Can you give us an example of a time when you needed to reach an agreement with other people who were in stark disagreement with what you were trying to do? I, I sit here and give you 100 right off the top. It's the budget. Um, every single budget went through with flying colors. We were able to build a consensus. Uh, the, the car registration tax, uh, we were able to build a consensus. The Scarborough subway uh, that other councillors didn't want. We built a consensus, not only with the council, but all three levels of government, with the federal government, with the provincial government, and the council. Um, I, could, I could just keep, keep going and going. Labor, a uh, historic labor deal. Uh, the city's never had labor peace like this. We were able to build a consensus with the unions, frontline workers, city management, and council. Is it uh, fair to say the, most of those triumphs came early in your brother's term? But no. as you move towards the end of the term, we no. did see a lot of 42 to 2 votes yeah, near the well, end. No, no, actually, uh, let me explain. Uh, just last year, we were able to bring the federal government on board with the provincial government and the council, and we delivered the Scarborough subway to the people of Scarborough. Does he get points for that? Well, it's not something I support because uh, I support the LRT. No, I understand but that. But as an example you... of bringing people on side who weren't on side, does he get credit for that? 
well, if the decision is the wrong decision, then I'd much rather see people not coming on side. There was a very split vote, and the council was very split about uh, who, whether the LRT should be built or not in Scarborough. Had it not been the stop of four years, it would have been done by early next year before the Pan Am Games. But putting aside to that question, to answer your question directly, is that I have been able to work with people like Tom Jacobek, which is very different than who I, uh, in terms of what Just we believe in. For people former, watching us outside Toronto, yeah, yes. Former budget chief. Conservative. Uh, conservative, yeah. under Mel Lassman. And I persuaded him that it's important to invest in a pilot project that's called First Duty. And there are eight pilot projects funded in partnership with the Atkinson Foundation. And that we were able to demonstrate that when you bring all the service provider together and provide good services use for children using the school as a hub, that's a good way to go. And that formed the basis of the province of Ontario doing all day kindergarten because they saw the value of okay. all of that. Mr. Tory, something where you brought I'll others on a slightly side? different example, but from something you have a bit of an interest in, even though it's unfortunate you're a Hamilton Ticat fan, but Nobody's in the perfect. Canadian Football League, I was there as a volunteer commissioner when the league was struggling. And our television network came to us and said they wanted to create Friday night football. And all the owners were adamantly opposed to this because they thought no one would show up to the stadium to see the games and they needed the money from people buying the tickets. And I persuaded them with the television network that we would create Friday Night Football, which today is a huge success and people still come to the stadium. But we had to work at it and work at it and work at it. We had to share ideas back and forth. We had to listen to the owners, obviously. They were the people who owned the league as well. But it was an example where it started off with everybody saying no way it would ever happen. And it happened. And today it's a huge success. You've all been at this politics thing for greater or lesser terms. And I wonder, what do you like least about being a politician, Doug Ford? Well, I, I think it, any uh, elected official would say this. The personal attacks on your family, uh, personal attacks on your business, uh, personal attacks on, on extended family, my mother, uh, my brothers, my sister, uh, they get personal. Uh, when someone calls you trash, like Mr. Tory did, that's personal. I go after Mr. Tory's record. I don't go after him personally. I don't call him a turkey. I don't call him a chicken. I don't call him a bully. Uh, but he wants to do that. that. That's his choice. I will go after his record, his resume, but I won't be calling him names, personal names. And I find it ironic. He talks about being div divisive. But, you know, again, let's go back when he attacked the prime minister's facial mannerisms, Jean Chrétien in the election. That was his plan. Destroyed the Conservative Party, went down to two seats, but he talks out of both sides of his mouth, saying, you know, let's all get along, but when it's my turn, I'll call you nasty names. Okay, let's give you a chance to respond yeah, to that first, know, and then I'll ask you the same question. Steve, because given the chance the other day to talk about Mr. Ford's record, because they gave us a chance in one of these many debates to talk about our competitors, uh, I said how much I admired the fact that he'd build up a business, and he did get the business from his father, but, you know, to me, that's neither here nor there. He's built it up and created more jobs, and I said I was proud of that and hoped we could replicate that a thousand times over in the city. And yet he then presents my career as something where, you know, everything I've ever happened, I sort of fell into it somehow or won a lottery or something. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's again, I'm, I'm just disappointed that Doug, you know, feels that he's, he has to do that sort of thing when, in fact, I'm quite prepared to say his business story is a story I admire. And, uh, you know, I would hope he could say the same of some of the stuff I've done in my career too. But it lapses into that. So if you ask me, I would actually give you the same answer, that it is uh, the, the fact that it seems to be part of the business now in 2014. I, I sat in this studio and debated uh, David Miller and Barbara Hall and I had done that for nine months running for mayor 11 years ago and there wasn't ever a personal attack, not one. What's different this time then? Well I think the environment of politics has changed. Uh, I don't know. I mean I wish I could explain it because I think it's a very negative development for you know the kind of intelligent discourse that people want to hear about the future of the city but it's changed. There's no question about that. Olivia Chan, you've been a politician at a couple of different levels. What do you like least about politics today? That uh, it's all about sloganeering, and some people will say anything to get elected. Uh, I can give you some examples. I, I just really think that detailed policies matter, that if you say 
like for example, Mr. Tory said that he can get the smart track built in seventeen uh, in seven years. Well, no, yours is because well, it's not seventeen. See, just 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 illustrate. Let me give you an example. Goodness. Hang on, folks. Let me give you an example. The 17 years he just talked about, but the chief planner said that to build the downtown subway relief line would take 12 years. And he just said 17 over and over and over she, again. She is right about and that. You ten, do keep saying 17. But, and and then, she but, but allow me to say Look seven. Up, but hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. And then there's seven years, this whole thing. But but you have to see the CEO of Metrolink said that electrifying goal. Be lucky if you can get it done by 10. And on top of that, I asked the question, do you have plans? And B, because of TIF financial, um, the, 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 the whole notion of the very risky financial plan that Mr. Tory have um, may not work and has not worked in New York and elsewhere. Where is the plan B? There isn't a plan B. Okay, but How, remember, the question is, what do you like least what, about well, least, being a politician? Least is the, that it is all about a slogan instead of saying, answering concrete questions, mm -hmm. how many kilometers do we need to tunnel for Mr. Tory's plan, etc. So I much rather that when we have a platform discussion or, or a issue discussion, that we say very clearly how, how many units of affordable housing, is it real? Can we talk about the concrete ideas, child care, which we are mandated to do? I, they've been silent from both of them okay, about it. Let so me put that is what disturbs me the most. And it's all about sloganeering and um, not concrete uh, issues. Forgive the interruption. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock here as well. Uh, I want to put a hypothetical out there, and I'd like to get your feedback on this. It's, it's sort of a hypothetical because chances are this will probably happen in the term of whoever becomes mayor. And the hypothetical is you get the job, you get the chain of office on, and you discover that all of a sudden you're running a, anywhere from a $250 million to a $1 billion shortfall. What do you do? You hadn't anticipated it. Now you've got the job, and it's your responsibility to fix it. Doug Ford, what do you do? I know that's not the case because I was a vice chair of budget. That's what the case was when we walked through the door. They said we're facing $774 million of pressure. There had to be 24% tax hikes, and there's no way we'd be able to bring it down. The first year we delivered a zero percent. We've at, at the end of our term, like I said earlier, there's a two hundred forty-eight million dollar surplus. So we faced that when we went in there. We couldn't believe the underfunding of all programs of infrastructure. We're putting ten billion dollars into infrastructure. We put five hundred million into the TTC. Okay, but last it could year. happen again. If it happened again, what would you do? Well, I'd do the same thing. I'd go in there and uh, review the budget, as we did for the first time in the history of Toronto, line item by line item. We'd make sure we had efficiencies. We'd make sure we drove a strong labour deal, which we did, to make sure people put money back in their pockets, not in the government's pockets. We held everyone accountable right across the board. We lowered the budgets for, for the uh, councillors. Okay. John Tory, what would you do? Well, when you hear Mr. Ford talk, uh, you would have the impression that every ounce of inefficiency has been sort of squeezed out of the government, and yet people no, see with their own eyes when they see, uh, you know, millions upon millions being wasted at the Union Station way over budget, or they see streets being ripped up twice in six months because one part of the government stopped talking to the other. So I think there's a lot of work to be done, Steve, that could help bring that uh, deficit down if you had such a thing, uh, you know, uh, to get to balance the budget as by law you're required to do. But the other thing is, I think that there's going to be a crucial assignment in front of the next mayor to uh, be dealing with the other two governments and causing them to make the kind of consistent, uh, adequate investment in this city, uh, which is, as you said at the outset, it's the country's biggest city, it's the province's capital city, it's the most complex city in Canada. And so when it comes to things like urban transit, like affordable housing, like child care, uh, like other kinds of infrastructure, I think they have to step up. And I think that could make a big contribution if they played their appropriate part. Well, You've got a ten uh, and a half billion dollar deficit. Do you think they're going to give you more money for stuff? Well, the, the federal government <laughs> Let's start with them. They have a six and a half billion dollar surplus. I think that's coming. So Pending. I'd be wanting to say that uh, I'd be wanting to go and make sure Toronto got its fair share of that. And I think that that is a very good investment. But you have to have people who can go and persuade them to make that investment, which we do in the I, city. I don't think it's just the mayor. The first thing I would do is to say to the people of Toronto, 
and do it in a meaningful way and say, we have this problem here. And I will ask them to participate, to assist, and say, okay, if we are to have that kind of level of policing, this number of officers, this is how much we have to pay. Are you willing to do less, get less, okay? And what about um, number of grants that we provide to a lot of social services groups? Uh, dental care for seniors. This is how much we pay on each of these things. And no, I don't think that we have a spending problem because many, many research and studies have said that, that uh, the city have a revenue problem. We need more investment. So I would go to them and say, okay, what are you willing to cut? Well, not likely we're going to be able to cut a whole lot because I don't think TDC fares go up anymore. So if we are to invest with each other for each other, maybe we need to get some more revenue. Are we going to be able to do it through property taxes with a special levy? We don't know, perhaps, maybe not. Then, then you get all the people that have gone through the exercise and understanding the problem that we have. We can then collectively go to the province and to the federal government to say, look, eight cents per tax dollar come to the city is not enough. Let us work together to get the other two levels of government that's got 92 cents per tax dollar to get some of our taxes back. Okay. And not let only me. do we work with ourselves and our citizens, let us work together with the big city mayors all across the country, with the Federation of Canadian okay. Municipalities. Can I jump in here? Come together. I'm trying so, so hard to keep an eye okay. on the clock here. I don't want to run us out of time. I want to know at the end of the day what this election's about. Because uh, I know you're not a huge fan of the mainstream media, but I do read in the media that essentially this election is about getting rid of the Fords. For a lot of people, this election is about getting rid of the Fords. And I want to know if that's what you people think this election's at the end of the day all about. Olivia Chow, I see you're shaking your head. You don't no. think so? No, no. Because I think it's important that we do not vote based on fear. There's a lot of, oh, um, Ford problem, fearful. I think this election is about coming together to create a better city, a city that's more caring, more fair, what we can do for and with each other. Okay, you've that's seen more this. important. So that's a much more hopeful way to proceed rather than being fearful. You've, you've, you've heard this out there, obviously. What's your view on well, that? Well, I've heard it from the opposition. I haven't heard it from uh, the real people of Toronto that are actually putting more money uh, back into their pockets. Uh, their biggest fear is that one of these two friends here beside me are actually going to get in. All their buddies are going to get their hands back in the cookie jar that we pulled out, and uh, we're, we're standing by the gate. You know, here, here's the here's the safe for the public, the public till, and they're going to be lined up from here to Timbuktu to get their hands back in the public till. And we've worked hard for four years, making sure we 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 were prudent fiscal managers. We were prudent fiscal managers. We've broken every single record there's been in, in Toronto on a positive note. And I've, I've worked hard along with council and, and the mayor to make sure we've turned the city around. My biggest fear is that uh, they're going to get back in and, and uh, the establishment, special interest, the lobbyists are all getting their hands back in the cookie jar. They can't wait. It'll be a disaster for Toronto. Not mentioning no one wants their roads ripped up. Both my competitors here want to rip up the roads mm -hmm. uh, on Shepherd, on Eglinton, on Finch. I want to build a world-class city with subways. Well, it, it, that, of course, is a bit of a fantasy plan, but you asked for an answer on a question, and I we think that it before. is not, I don't think it is personal, but I think it is a, a frustrated response people feel to an environment in which things haven't got done. They know objectively, notwithstanding all the claims that are made by Mr. Ford, and it's disappointing because some of them are, you know, just counter to people's own experience with their own eyeballs. Traffic is way worse. Transit has, uh, there's some construction underway, but it hasn't improved. It's actually gone down. They cut the budget for transit at one point in time. Uh, you know, the unemployment rate has run consistently above the national average here for both people in general and especially young people. I mean, this is not a sort of a ringing, uh, you know, declaration of victory. Uh, and people know that. And I think they're sort of saying, look, we've got to move the city forward. It has been, you know, in, in kind of a deep freeze uh, the last little while because of this divisiveness and this inability to get things done. But Mr. Tory, you won't restore any of the cuts that, that Mr. Ford 
have levied. Well, you, okay. TDC, for example, you said that you, you wouldn't commit to, com yeah, you know to why, put the Olivia? money back in. Because you just and signed you your name a, to a $500 well, million dollar report. No, and what I, I said, what I said, that. I'll, I'll wait my turn. Second. You, you I, give us both I, a turn. No, you, but make the, make the allegation, then we'll let him respond. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't put any funding into child care, for example. Well, we're on, you I thought we were on TTC. Well, and TDC, you okay. won't do anything well, just, for immediately. Can we be can right? we be specific? What I'll is be the, more what specific. is the, what is the cut that you're concerned he won't restore? Let us just be very specific. Fifteen million dollar on TTC as a result. Worst bus services, TDC fares have gone up. That's the operating budget that was cut when Mr. Ford came in. Okay, Mr. let's Bob focus Ford. on that. Is she right about that? It. A report came out suggesting that you could restore it and do more, buy more buses and have garages for buses and so on. All terrific stuff. All I said was, and it's in fact what the TTC did, is it had to go into the budget process because what I will not do, I promise you, and I promise the viewers, is make promises about millions and hundreds of millions of dollars without knowing where the money's going to come from. There's all kinds of people lined up to want more money. And again, there is no answer to the question with this $500 million transit plan yeah. as to how it's going to be but paid. But you made no, Mr. Ford, what you, Mr. Mr. Ford's turn. Thank you. Mr. Ford's turn. You know, Mr. Tory's saying he's not going to make a promise. He has no engineering firm. He's promising $8 billion. There's holes all over his transit plan. It doesn't add up. It's a pie in the sky, grandiose idea. People don't want LRTs no, 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 see, running down the center ways. of the you street. See, earlier on they were saying the financing method I chose. Ms. Chow was saying the financing method I chose, called tax increment financing, doesn't work, hasn't worked here and there, and they had all kinds of criticism. Then you have Mr. Ford saying, I have no way of paying for it. It doesn't work both ways. I will say, and that's why I brought it in here, the leading transit expert resident in Toronto, North Who's American that? wide expert, Eric oh, Miller, he said that Smart no, Track should be proceeded with. The headline on it says, let's build the transit system we need. Olivia Chow and John Tory transit ideas so are has, both good. That's some, what he said. He has some academic that writes in a newspaper, and that's an $8 billion. Try to go to any board with an academic that wrote an article in the newspaper and said, oh yeah, here you go, guys. And every time you ask him a question, Well, what he about your subway plan? Uh, it's, John, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's no, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds, Fantasy. if not thousands, of True. hours of EAs done from TTC and Metrolinx. But, Steve, I have the, the professionals the doing it. Day, he has uh, it, some engineering firm. I don't know, what is it called, day, Tory and at, Tory? At the, end of the day, sure. at the end of the day, we have to be honest with taxpayers, right? Or with residents of this city. If we want something and need something, we have to pay for it. We have to invest in it right now. Both of them, whether it's subways or smart track, whatever it is, they are saying to voters out there right now, don't worry, you don't have to pay, we'll just borrow a whole lot of money, we're worried about how we're gonna pay for it. You know, this kind of risky financial scheme will result in a huge property tax increase. We've seen this picture before. Okay, let me, in our last minute and change here, ask you one final question, and then, and, you sort of uh, hinted at this a little earlier that you've had this question before, so uh, I can't pretend it's incredibly original. But we finished the debate in 2010 with your brother this way, and we got some interesting answers, so we want to try it again. You've gotten to know each other really well while campaigning against each other. You can probably give each other's answers. You know each other so well right now. Is there one attribute about the other two candidates you wish you had? Olivia Chow? Fire well, away. I wish that I have both of their ability to sympathize things so much into one slogan and, and be loud and smooth and fast talking about it and just keep talking, 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 and you know, you, you know, you listen to it, you know, even though there's no details. And that's an amazing quality both of them have. I'm not sure that's a compliment, is it? I well, mean, we'll see. It is, okay. it is. John Torrey, of your two competitors, what are some of the attributes they have you wish you had? I wish I had Olivia Chow's street credibility uh, on some of the issues that I have spent a lot of time on as a volunteer in, this, in, the, in the community. And she's got a great deal of street credibility for that, and I admire that, and I'm uh, envious of that because I've worked hard in some of these areas, but people haven't necessarily seen that. In Doug Ford's case, um, I think he's got a single-mindedness that, uh, you know, uh, I think has served him very well in, in business, and I admire that because sometimes, you know, that's, uh, you have to be single-minded that way. Mr. Ford. Well, I'll start off with Mr. Tory. I hosted a radio show. I love radio. He's, he's a great radio show host. He should stick with that. <laughs> and with Olivia, oh, no. Olivia. You want to see him go back to uh, 1010, do you? Well, he's great. He's a great radio host. He's, you know, he's smooth, slick talker. And, uh, and, uh, and Olivia, it's, you, it's, you know, I, I, what I can say is not what I don't have, 
but the passion she shares, the same passion I share with helping people that aren't uh, as fortunate as all of us. Okay, that feels like a good place to leave it. There's some pretty good compliments <laughs> at the end. Okay, we asked your brother four years ago what he admired about George Smitherman. His tie. Yeah, His tie. That's it. what he said. Oh, His no. tie. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was it. Uh, we wish the three of you well. Uh, it's almost over, everybody. It's yeah. almost over. Olivia Chow, Doug Ford, John Tory. Thanks so much for your time Thank tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Oh, and I should say one more thing, parenthetically. Of yeah. course, we all wish your brother well Thank in his you fight so with much. cancer. We I hope really he feels better it. soon. Thank you. Not at all. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.